Hello, in this video I will introduce the complex potential to form the basis of complex potential flow theory. Alright, so to introduce the complex potential, let's just go back to uh, more basic things, and in particular, let us introduce uh, the real differentiation. So let's start off by using or defining a function, um, f, uh, which is going to take uh, uh, a variable in R and bring it to R as well. So it's a real function of a real variable. And the variable is x, for instance. So what real differentiation what real differentiation is uh, is nothing else but df by dx, okay? And the definition of this operation is the limit when dx tends to uh, zero of f of x plus dx was well, a delta x, sorry, uh, minus f of x, and the whole thing uh, divided by delta x. So this is what the, the uh, definition um, of the real differentiation is. But since, since the, the set of the real number is not algebraically closed, and that its algebraic closure is c, uh, we can define the same operation in c, and it should be, uh, we should be able to carry it out. So since C is the algebraic closure of R. Uh, we can write the same operation in C for a complex function of a complex variable. Okay, and so <clears throat> let me just introduce uh, then that new function. So now let's take f and it takes uh, an input in C and turns it into a complex number. Okay, and that number I'm just going to use z and uh, my z um, um, and variable, and I'm introducing the variable z, which will be x plus i y, so that you know we we have a sort of standardized writing for uh, for these complex numbers. And so, well, given this, then the complex differentiation just by extrapolation from what we know of real differentiation. Uh, reads df by dz, okay, equals the limits when delta z tends to zero of f of z plus delta z minus f of z divided by delta z. Okay? But the, the key thing here is that, well, you know, when we had the real differentiation, there's only one dimension over which we can actually uh, look at well, you know, the differentiation or the slope of that function. In this case here, it's a little bit more complex because, well, the differentiation is on a variable that really lies on a two-dimensional plane. Uh, and so we need to be a bit more specific about this definition. What we need to say is that the result of this limit um, has to be the same regardless of the orientation of, uh, of, of, uh, of delta z, okay? So the result of this limit so that this operation can exist and be well defined uh, of this limit has to be the same, has to be the same regardless of the orientation uh, of delta z. Okay? Um, for so, for instance, well, we can define a set of, of generating directions, uh, which uh, a set of generating orientations can be uh, delta z. Well, I'll just write it down here. Like delta z equals uh, delta x. So that would be the horizontal direction on your complex plane. 
and we can also have delta z equals i delta y, which will be the vertical direction on your complex on your complex plane. Okay, um, and so based on uh, based on these sort of definition, uh, then that imposes a condition on uh, on on this uh, differentiation. So in particular, uh, uh, let me just introduce. Uh, let us decompose f. So f is a function of z, remember? So it's a complex function that leads to complex result. And let's just write down that this is g of x and y, and g is going to be a real function of real variables, plus i h of x and y. Okay? And so when I do this, what I have defined is g to be a function that takes an input in R2, okay, and well, x and y, right, so x and y are real variable, and that gives me back an answer in R. And the same thing goes for h, from R2 to R. Well, this doesn't help us much, you know, but practically speaking, uh, this helps us gain visibility on what this function f is doing. So we have separated f into its real part and its imaginary part. And each of these function admits input variables in R. They're not in C anymore, okay? So we've just essentially turned that complex problem into a set of real problems. Um, and what we can write down here is what this differentiation, uh, how this differentiation applies to this decomposition of the function. So uh, let's just have a look at this. So, so first, for delta z equals delta x, what we have is df by dz equals, well, dg by dx plus i dh by dx. Okay, no problem here. Then if we take the other one, if we take delta z equals i delta y, then what we get, okay, is, so df by dz is, well, dg by di delta y, the i goes out and 1 over i is minus, minus i, so that gives me minus i dg uh, by dy, okay? Um, and here, well, I get the i out, and so that just gives me dh by dy, okay? And the interesting thing is that what we said is that this, this sentence is very important here. We have to have the same results no matter the direction of delta z. What that means, practically, is that these two, this set of two equations, have to be equal, right? So what that means is that we should have dg over d. Uh, x, sorry, plus i dh over dx, which has to be equal to uh, dh over dy minus i dg over dy. So I've just equaled this to this, right? And if I keep going, I've got something that is real plus i something that is real. Remember these functions are defined in R, and it's the same thing on the other side, right? So I can decompose this by looking at, by setting up two equations, one which would be the equality on the real axis and one which would be equality on the imaginary axis. So what I get out of this is a first equation on the real axis, which is that dg by dx has to be equal to dh by dy. And the second equation, it's on the imaginary axis, so that's going to be dh by dx which has to be equal to, there is a minus sign here, so minus dg by dy, okay? And so what we have here uh, is two functions that are linked to each other by their de derivatives. It's always the derivative with respect to, the, to a different quantity, and in one of these equations, there's a minus sign. So this particular set of equation is called the Cauchy Riemann equation, equations, okay? 
And these are extremely powerful equation in complex uh, in complex in complex potential flow theory, for instance, right? Just in complex analysis, because what that means um, is that um, I'm going to write it down on the right page here. Uh, that this system can be broken down into two different, it has two implications. I'll, I'll show you what these implications are. So first of all, let me just write down dg by dx equals dh by dy and uh, dh by dx equals minus dg by dy. So that's our starting set of equations. What I'm going to do <coughs> is, well, let's just first of all take this system and differentiate the first equation by x once more. So what I get by doing this is d2g by dx squared equals dh, d2h, sorry, by dx dy. That's my first equation. And then the game is, then in the second equation, I want to make this guy appear. So I can just get rid of the h altogether by summing or, or subtracting one equation from the other. So I'm differentiating the second equation by y and I get d2h by dx dy equals minus dg by dy squared, uh, d2g, sorry, by dy squared, okay? And, well, the good thing about this is that now I can just replace this quantity here by this, and what I get is d2g by dx squared equals minus d2g by dy squared, or, in other words, the Laplacian of g equals zero. That's one way to get one of these results. The second of these operation is, well, as you can imagine, that's going to be the, the, the reverse operation. We're just going to try and get an equation on h instead of an equation on g. And so I'm going to differentiate this first equation with respect to y. So what I get is uh, d2g by dx dy equals d2h by dy squared. That's my first guy. And I want to make that appear in the second equation, so I'm ha I have to multiply this, uh, differentiate the second equation with respect to x. So what I get is d2h by dx squared equals minus d2g by dx dy. Okay, and I can fiddle around with the minus sign, put the plus here, and therefore a minus there, so that I get exactly the same um, here and there. And so what that gives me is that d2h um, by dy squared, that's this guy, is equal to this, so that, minus d2, sorry, d2h over dx squared, and in other words, what I get here is d is the Laplacian of h um, is equal to zero. And that comes naturally from defining these quantities in this fashion, from th this line, and saying that f is a complex differentiable function, and that just gives us the, the Cauchy-Riemann equation. And from these Cauchy-Riemann equation, as soon as we have this, we know that g and h are harmonic functions. They satisfy the Laplacian equals zero, okay? So this is a very strong and important result in, um, in complex theory, complex limit theory. Okay, now that we have this, we can just go back and do some fluid dynamics, okay? So that's the, uh, the uh, applied mass parentheses done. So let's assume that we have a planar Um, planar, incompressible, and irritational flow. So these flows admit a stream function because they're incompressible. And that stream function I'm going to write down psi, and the definition of psi is going to be u equals uh, d psi by dy, and v equals minus d psi by dx. Um, and 
uh, they also admit a velocity potential. And so what the velocity potential, um, uh, and the way the velocity potential uh, writes is phi, um, and it's defined uh, through the velocity gradient. Okay? And what we know is that from there, um, these functions satisfy the Laplacian of psi equals the Laplacian of phi equals zero. And so because these, um, these functions, are, both of them are harmonic, this is the same as what we had uh, in, in, in the case of the, this, this complex calculation with g and h. Both of these functions are harmonic. They're both taking real numbers, a set of two real numbers, and, 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 and returning a real number. This is the same here. Um, psi and, and phi are both on x and y, and they both return a, com a, a, a real number. Because of this analogy, we can introduce the complex potential. And this complex potential is W. It's going to be on the complex plane, so Z. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, um, written as there's a choice here, and much like we uh, we had a choice when we wrote down here the stream function to put the minus sign here. Here again, there is a choice. By convention, I'm going to use the choice that's the most often used, which is to use the velocity potential first, because this is called a complex potential. So the velocity potential comes first of x and y and then on the imaginary for an, the imaginary component is going to be on psi x and y okay so the real part of the complex potential is going to be constituted of the um, uh, velocity potential and the imaginary part is going to be the stream function that is the definition of this complex potential we can take well that's a one convention for the definition and because we have this, well, you know, one important question that we always come back to in fluid dynamics is how can we express the velocity? So the velocity is very easily expressed based on this because, well, you know, the velocity is the difference, is, is the derivative of what's the gradient of the velocity potential, but it involves also the, the, the derivative of the stream function. So let's just have a look at what uh, dw over dz equal to, is equal to. It's a, it's, a, it's a total derivative. Let's have a look at what this is equal to. So if I decide to go uh, the uh, dx, delta x equals delta, uh, sorry, delta z equals delta x way, then what I get is d phi by dx plus i d psi by dx. If I decide to go the other way and say that, for instance, um, the delta z is i uh, delta y, then what I get is minus i d phi by dy plus d psi by dy, okay? And now we can use the definition of the stream function or the, uh, or the velocity potential here to see what these uh, two uh, things are equal to. So the first one here we get u plus i and d psi by dx is minus v, so that's minus iv, okay? Let's have a look at the second one. So, well, the real, uh, here, the real component is this guy, d psi by dy, which is u. Then I get minus i, and d phi by dy, d phi by dy is v. So that's minus i v. And you can see that this differentiation is well posed in this context. We're allowed to do this because no matter what the direction that we're taking here, we're ending up with the same result. Okay, so in other words, what we have here to, to find the velocity is that dw by dz is u minus iv. So we can just take the complex conjugation of this number and then get a complex version of the velocity, u plus iv, 
then is equal to dw by dz, complex conjugated. In this video, we've reviewed some basic rule on real and complex differentiation, and we showed how we could introduce the complex potential based in particular on the Cauchy-Riemann equation. Uh, these, this concludes this video on the complex potential.